Hardware Info TV wordt mede mogelijk gemaakt door Eminent en Samsung. In deze aflevering van Hardware Info TV. Verleden, heden en toekomst van wifi netwerken. Welkom bij Harte Info TV. Een 802 11 AC router koop je al voor zo'n 100 euro, maar er meer dan 400 euro op stuk slaan is ook geen enkel probleem. Wat is nou echt het verschil tussen al die verschillende versies van 802 11 AC? Om ons dat uit te leggen is opnieuw in de Harte Info TV studio Lionel Paris, de European Product Manager bij Netgear. Good to have you back. And since your English is, uh, since, since you're French and you speak English but no Dutch, we're going to do the interview in English again. Thank you very much. <laughs> so you were here uh, quite some time ago when mm -hmm. the first 802.11 AC routers came to the market. That's We true. talked about the new standard. Yeah. Now there's the second generation, wave two of Correct. AC routers coming to the market. Uh, but before we're going to uh, talk about them, first let's, let us take a step back and uh, talk again about all the different uh, standards that mm -hmm. came to the market in the last couple of years. And then we start in 2009 with the first 802.11 N standard. Yep, life was simple. Life was simple. <laughs> one band, um, possible of three antennas, 100 to 450 megabit. And that's an important thing to note because that's still the case. The more antennas a router has, the more speed you can have simply by using multiple antennas at once. And that was already uh, developed in 2009. Correct, correct. And what we had in 2009 and still, of course, it's not just the router, but also the clients that have to uh, be able to use multiple antennas. Correct. So we went from 150 for, from one antenna to 450, and then the next thing happened. Yeah, the next thing that happened, as you can see here, that was the optional piece of the standard. So the dual band, that was not mandatory. So dual band bring another band in five gigahertz, additional band, and the speed, as you can see, was exactly the same. So basically we move uh, the speed from 600 to 900 using the same technology, but just two band, two different bands. Yeah, but and here the first time, uh, for the first time we had to uh, remember that that maximum speed was not achievable by one device because one device will talk on one band to a router. Correct. But it would it was possible to let one client talk on 2.4 gigahertz, another client on 5 gigahertz, five gigahertz. and in theory they would, could both get 450. Correct. So the router can do both at the same time, the, can, the client cannot. It's yeah. either 2.4, either 5. And then uh, after that, the new standard, 802.11ac. For that, 5 gigahertz was mandatory. 2.4 gigahertz was still there, but that was simply a copy of 802.11n. Correct. So basically to guarantee a smooth transition, the way they manage it, unlike the 11g before, uh, right now, the AC has integrated completely the 11N. So, extremely simple for consumer. They don't have to worry about the type of device they have because it will be taken care of. It simply means if you have an older device without 802.11 AC, the sold. standard makes 100% sure that it can always talk to Correct. any 802.11 AC router. Correct. So, that end part, of course, is exactly the same on both bands, a maximum of 450 megabits. But then, the real AC thing exactly. happened. So the real AC, so the, the major difference is, uh, on the 2.4, as you can see, uh, the major difference is the number of QAM. So you can see this as a pipe, and the more information we put into there, the more bandwidth you have as a result. So basically, that's why between a 64 QAM, the old implementation and the new one, still using 40 megahertz, you get small differences in terms of speed, 150 to 200, 200 to 400, and so on. Yeah. Well, on and that's simply putting more bits through the same through the same tube. Yeah, yeah. And while on the five gigahertz band, the news effect was the first time we were able to use the 80 megahertz channel bandwidth. Yeah. So it's basically doubling the capacity of the previous technology, which was working on 40, and we're using the same QAM modulation. So yeah. moving from 64 to 256, you adding those two, and then you see a huge increase on the bandwidth. Yeah from 150 to 433 for one antenna. So uh, to uh, stick to that analogy of a, of a water pipe mm -hmm. uh, f uh, for one more time, with 256 com, what we're essentially saying, we have a pipe that has the same size, but somehow with more pressure, we can put in, put through more water. Exactly. And exactly. with 80 megahertz, we're simply Energy making a bigger pipe. Correct, correct. And then also a fourth antenna. Correct. 
So we can use now use up to four antennas because in the past 11 n was stopping at three. Some design went at four, but it was not mass, massively widespread. Yeah. So unlike in 11 AC, this is definitely part of what this technology is supposed to do. So four stream, meaning four antennas. But again, also here, the fourth antenna is optional. So this was uh, one way to distinguish more expensive, faster routers from the more uh, the, the, the cheaper, the more value routers. Yep. So three was the standard before in 11N. Now it can go up to four with 11AC. Yeah. And that's basically part of the standard. It's also one of the differences. Yeah. All right. And then uh, here's like an optional extra thing. Not a lot of routers had this. We went from first from 64 to 256 com, and then also 1024. Exactly. So it's another way, uh, like we did previously, to add more speed to the product without really changing the, the way they, they behave and the way they, they work. Yeah. So, so again, to stick to our analogy, this is putting more even pressure more water, on more, more pressure, more pressure on the water. On water. And this is what we see for a lot of routers right now, because uh, we simply add up the, uh, the maximum speeds for both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. Mm -hmm. These are these popular 3200 routers. Yep. Uh, again, what we have to say to use these uh, to use this maximum speed, clients also uh, have to use this. Uh, of course, uh, 1024 com, and that's not very common. No, this is not very common. As you can see, this is optional, uh, so yeah. this is not part of the standard. Well, the standard is, is really looking at 256, so you may expect adapter to use this. However, because your overall bandwidth is increasing, you still will have a benefit, but not to a direct throughput to one single device. Yeah. All right, and now we're getting to what's really new, and that's yes. what we call Wave 2. Correct. So we're following here now. Uh, as you can see, uh, 11AC was uh, launched in December 2013. So two years after, now we're introducing Wave 2. So Wave 2 is three things. The number one is it's mandatory in Wave 2 to use four stream design, meaning four antenna on the product. So we're not looking the lower spec one, two, or three. Every Wave 2 routers Every has Wave four 2 antennas. needs to have four antennas to be able to use the four stream simultaneously. Yeah. That's the number one. The number two is the appearance of uh, something called Mu MIMO. So we used to know MIMO since uh, 11N. So basically, that's the capacity of all the antenna to work at the same time. Yeah, multi-input, well, multi-output. That's yeah. what. So now Mu MIMO allow you to have the single router here talking to three client at the same time, because otherwise they can speak to one, wait for the answer, speak to the other one. So for the very first time in Wi-Fi, a single router or gateway will be able to communicate with three devices at the same time, get an answer back, and communicate with three others. And thanks to multi-user MIMO, it isn't a big problem anymore that the clients have less antennas. Because, for instance, if you have three clients with only one antenna, yeah, it's not and your routers bring... have three or four, you can literally split the bandwidth. Exactly. So uh, Mu MIMO will work better the more you have antenna on the device. So yeah. the more the time will grow, and this, this is expected this year, we're going to see more devices using from one to two antenna on the mobile device, and maybe three on the laptop and on the uh, tablet as well. Yeah. So in order to get the full benefit of the technology. Yeah. And again, multi-user MIMO is full part of the standard, so it's not yep. just one or two vendors that no, do no, it. No, no, Everybody yeah. can do this. It's part of the Wave 2, so it's still not fully ratified yet. The Mu MIMO will be ratified before, and the, um, the standard interoperability will be done before the end of this year. Clear. Uh, the other thing we see is like a bigger bank with it, going from 80 Correct. to 160 megahertz. So same thing, in order to get the benefits uh, of the 160 megahertz, obviously you need to get device capable yeah. of supporting this. So this is why the way we implement the 160 megahertz in this product, in order to give a benefit to the end user immediately, is to be able not to use a, a huge pipe of 160, yeah. but two single of 80. Because most of the device we have today in our pocket, the mobile phone, are using 80 megahertz. Yeah. So basically, this product allows you to doubling the capacity. So how usable is this? Mm -hmm. For instance, if you live in a city and you have a lot of houses near to you, I can imagine that finding 160 megahertz of, uh, of bandwidth somewhere on a frequency without interference from your neighbors is almost impossible. Um, yes and no, because what is crowded and congested today is the 2.4. By using the 5 gigahertz band, by default, you will have less device and less network on that yeah. band. And inside this band, you have so much more channel you can use compared to the 2.4 that uh, you will find very easily a channel that you can keep for your home. Yeah. The 160 in this case is really the technology that uses the device. 
yeah. to send the information through. That's the channel bandwidth. So to be able to use this, we will need to get device supporting this. So I'm expecting this year to be to have in the market the first device using that technology. Yeah. Okay. But so you said the Wave Two uh, is standard isn't mm -hmm. fully uh, rationalized yet. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But the only piece is the MiuMiMo, which is still on the go. There is a lot of uh, interrupts still happening. So we're expecting this to be completed by this summer. Mm -hmm. The rest was already part of the initial 11NC standard. For example, the user 160 megahertz. That was the optional piece. Yeah. Like, if you remember the 11N, the dual band was the optional. In the case of AC, because it was already dual band, that's the optional piece. Yeah, but as we've seen uh, before with former <laughs> standards, products already on the market before the standard is a real standard. Of course. And so here, for instance, we have the, your Nighthawk yep. X4S. Mm -hmm. That is such a Wave 2 device. Correct. That does all these things. Correct. And one, once it's a real standard with a firmware update, it will be updated to, to have like the final version. Well, Actually, this guy is already supporting all you need, Mu, Mu, and 160. So what you need will be the, the client, the device to be able to talk with him. But yeah. nevertheless, it works today. And the principle for those products is to be future-proof. So you don't want to buy something today, which is AC, not being Wave 2, yeah. because you want to have the newest standard and be ready for the future. Yeah. And then for everyone that thinks 4.3 uh, gigabit is still not, not enough, enough. <laughs> there's coming more. We've got routers that add a second 5 gigahertz band. Correct. So these are tri-band, and I got one example here. So the major difference between those two, this one is dual band, 2.4 and 5, like we saw. And this one is adding a second 5 gigahertz band. So the use case is very simple here. The more we are, the months are passing, the more we have more and more and more connected devices. All are using Wi-Fi. So you may find a point where having the fattest product, the fastest product, is not going to be enough. What you need is to have a product capable of serving 20 plus device at the same time. But the thing is, when you mix in different type of device, 11N, 11AC, 2.4, 5 gigahertz, everything mixed together, your performance will go down. Simply because you're mixing technology together. So the only way to solve this is to add another 5 gigahertz band and the router will scan all your device and will see what are they capable of and it will group them by speed. And just by doing this, you can have the full benefit of the speed of your device because you're not gonna mix anymore the slow one and the fast one. And what we see here is that that second five gigahertz band is maximized to 80 megahertz bandwidth and that's what magically happens is that the, the slower uh, clients go to that second Yep. gigahertz band and the faster ones yep. that do support 160 megahertz go through that first five gigahertz band. Correct. And then on top of all that, you can also do that unstandardized 1024 com exactly. and then we get to 5.3 gigabit, gigabit exactly. in 8211 AC. AC. Yeah. So yes, it's a big number, uh, but however, I think the again, the use case for those product is not necessarily to go at five gigabit and plus. It's really the use case is Let's serve 25 plus device and you do not have to know what's going on. That's the beauty of it because yeah. it does this automatically. You scan your device, identify them, class them, regroup them, done. And then the question is, is this the endpoint for 82.11 AC or will something become after this? No, there will still a bit more. We're not done, done yet with 11 AC. So um, this standard, the way it is right now, you can pretty much imagine that the third band that we're showing here can have wave two as well. Yeah. If you do that, then the speed you can have at the total can move from 5.3 to something close, a little bit less than 10 gig. But that's going to be the end of 11 AC. And if we want 10 gig, then we need the next standard. The next standard, yes. <laughs> so the next standard is going to be AX. This is not expected until uh, 2019. So that's something we have to talk about in a couple of years. I will come back. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing is a lot of people think there already is an, an, a successor to 82.11ac that's called 82.11ad. Yes. Kind of makes sense because it's the net next letter. Exactly. Uh, let's also talk there about that for a short term because 82.11ad is a real standard, but it's definitely not the successor of AC. No, it's not. There is a kind of a confusion uh, since they CS around this protocol. So, and the, the rationale is the one you mentioned. AC, AD, kind of makes sense, it's the new one. It's yeah. not. AD has been ratified since two years, and this is really targeting AV. So basically, audio, video, oriented. This is basically HDML cable replacement. Yeah. So it's a standard we already knew as Y-Gig, exactly. and it, now it got a new name, essentially. Exactly. So it was Y-Gig when it was independent. 
And since it's part of a triple E, now it's calling AD. And, uh, but that's the exact same thing. So yeah. it's using the 60 gigahertz channel. Uh, so it's um, uh, very wide, but it's extremely narrow. So it's really at the side of you. So, so uh, for instance, we've seen uh, wireless docking stations and that, that can transfer the video from your laptop to a screen wirelessly, exactly. but only in like two or three meters. Correct. This has nothing to do with Wi-Fi. Exactly, that's the use case. Yeah. Uh, another new standard uh, that we've seen also uh, announced at CES mm -hmm. is 802.11ah, mm -hmm. yes. and that's actually quite the opposite. That's actually a new standard for getting further than usual Wi-Fi. Exactly, so that's the complete opposite. So we're going to use 900 megahertz and below, so which can uh, um, give you a full ohm coverage, even with concrete and all that. Mm -hmm. And the principle here is not to reach those type of speed. Those products will remain for that. But the, the, the game is really to get the better coverage and a very low latency for a small amount of information. So it's pretty much driven by IoT. Internet so, of Things. Exactly. And all those objects that you can place around your home that you need to get instant coverage and a very strong reactivity. For example, yeah. uh, motion detection, door opener mechanism, window opener mechanism, and stuff yeah. like that. But then also with like a longer range. So for instance, if you have like a robotic lawnmower, uh, it's in, with, with, with a lot of cases, it's impossible to talk to a device like that over Wi-Fi because the range is not long enough. Exactly. And 82.11ah will help with that. Exactly. That's the purpose. Yeah. And then I guess in the future, we can expect devices, routers like these that offer both AC and AH simply for different kinds of devices. Yeah, it's a, it's a correct assumption. I will say the future will integrate more technology and more different type of wireless technology in order yeah. to address the home case. So it's yeah. going to be the Wi-Fi and the connected home all together. Yeah. And then uh, the last thing we see in the slide is 802.11af. Mm -hmm. That's even lower, uh, lower frequency, yes. so even longer range, but that's not really something we see happening in the near future. No, it's, it has been ratified, it's existing, uh, it's called the Wi-Fi, um, but then the implementation at country level will be more complex because not all the country are using the same frequency as you can see here. So yeah. this is mostly used for television right now. Uh, I can maybe see this more in a CT uh, kind of perspective as opposed to a really consumer. So for example, all people which cannot be connected using regular DSL can be connected using this. So this is more the approach here. But nothing really for your home router. No. <laughs> all right, good information. Thank you very much. And Thank we you. hope to see you back summer in a couple of years when we can talk about 802.11ax. Thank you very much. En tot zover Hard Info TV voor vandaag. Nog even de excuses voor de wind, want die is zo, uh, zo erg vandaag dat onze studio het zelfs niet meer kon dempen. Wij zijn er in ieder geval volgende week vrijdag weer. Bedankt voor het kijken en tot volgende week. Waarbij Netgear eigenlijk toen heel hard zei, externe antennes zijn nergens voor nodig. Uh, uh, het ziet er misschien indrukwekkend uit, maar intern werkt net zo goed. En het ding hadden ze ook geen externe antennes. Daar zijn ze nu toch een beetje...